Good afternoon and welcome to Live Jazz New England. I'm your host, Pamela Hines. And my guest today is versatile violinist Jason Anik with Jason Yeager on piano, Greg Loafman on bass, and Mike Connors on drums. Jason's second album as a leader, Tipping Point, has been earning critical acclaim with praise from the Boston Globe, which stated, Jason's compositional voice is as distinctive as his virtuoso playing. One of the youngest instructors at the Berklee College of Music, Anik is considered a rising star in the world of jazz violin and mandolin, according to Downbeat Magazine. In addition to leading his own contemporary jazz ensemble and performing with the Rhythm Future Quartet, Anik has been touring and recording with Grammy Award-winning Nashville guitar virtuoso John Jorgensen since 2008, when he was recruited while still a senior at the Hart Conservatory. A new release called United is set to be released for us in March, and we're going to talk about that today on the show. Over the past year, Jason has been focusing on arranging and composing for the Rhythm Future Quartet, which he started with Finnish guitarist Oli Soikali, and they have done performances all over the U.S. and Europe. They're rapidly becoming one of the preeminent gypsy jazz groups in the country. Anik has also shared the stage with an array of artists like Bucky Pizzarelli, Frank Vignola, and Stevie Wonder, and has performed all over the world, including the Montreal Jazz Festival, Blue Note, Scholars, Yoshis, and The Late Night Show. We'll chat a little bit with Jason later on in the program, but right now, let's get started with the music. Thank you. 
You are listening to Jason Anik on the violin and Jason Yeager on the piano. They're doing a few duet tunes in preparation for their March release of a brand new CD called United. Yeah, so, so that was uh, Miles Davis' All Blues. And um, we're going to do uh, a song that I recorded on Tipping Point, which is another one that features these fine musicians. And this is one called My One and Only Love. And it was a little bit of a um, tribute to Stefan Grappelli.
You are listening to Live Jazz New England, and we are featuring a duet between pianist Jason Yeager and violinist Jason Anik, and this is in preparation for their new release in March. Yeah, this, this upcoming March on uh, Inner Circle Records, uh, Jason and I are releasing, it's kind of our second collaboration together, and we actually... Uh, believe it or not, grew up in the town next to each other. And we first met when we were about, what, about 15 or so? And um, you, you grew up in Marlboro? I grew Marlboro, up in Marlboro, Mass. Right? I grew up in Framingham. Yeah. And yeah. we met kind of going up to, grow, growing up and going to jazz jam sessions in the, in the region. And believe it or not, we actually met Greg and Mike, who are playing dr- with us today, at those same sessions when we were, what, 12 now? <laughs> and, and I might add that, uh, well, you can't see me, but I still look like I'm 12. Um, but, it's true. <laughs> uh, we, we, gr- we grew up listening to WICN as well. I mean, I can remember as soon as I was getting into jazz as a middle schooler and high schooler, 90.5 was a staple on the car radio. And uh, mm-hmm. so it's Likewise. a real pleasure to be, to be here playing in the studio. And this album is, I think what Jason is sort of implying here is that the album is sort of a culmination of years of collaboration and study and, and playing at sessions together and so we're really thrilled that uh, it's, it's going to be finally coming out and coming to fruition and we've got a number of CD release concerts in the works to celebrate the performance live so if you like what you hear today um, we hope to see you at uh, one or more of those and the next big one in the Boston area is at the Berkeley Performance Center on March 13th mm-hmm. where we'll be bringing this band as well as several special guests who play on the album um, into into a live setting. And what is your start on March 13th at the Berkeley Performance Center? Uh, that's an 8 p.m. start. 8 p.m. start, great. Yes. And I, no- I noticed um, that you've got quite a few um, performances coming up, uh, with, actually with, on various um, you know, ensembles. But, um, right. So it must have been like uh, you know, putting on your shoe to, to uh, play together. If you'd played together for that long, it must have been really great chemistry. And, and you know, as projects can go, that must have been quite an easy project for you. I think so. I think you know, the record, we, we were able to make things happen in a remarkably short period of time, and um, that's because we have the years of preparation and, and practice together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, we've never played My One and Only Love as a duo. That was the first time. So uh, I think there's a, we, we both listen to each other very carefully, and we're both very open to whatever happens in the moment, and I think that's why uh, the music kind of comes about pretty naturally. So my first violinist, was jazz violinist, was definitely also Stefan Grappelli. And was mm-hmm. that your first uh, jazz hero? Oh, one of the first, yeah. I actually got to see Stefan Grappelli perform when I was 12. My dad took me to see him at uh, Mechanics Hall. Wow. And so I got to meet him, and that was a wonderful experience. So, of course, uh, his, his playing has really influenced mine um, across the board and, and kind of his, his, his whole approach and energy and his, uh, you know, his whole feel. I just, I, you know, I love it. I love, I love his, his style of playing. So I noticed that you play many styles, but it seems like you gravitate a little bit towards the gypsy and hot club style of jazz, at least currently, um, both as a composer and player with the Rhythm Futures Quartet. So at what age did you become um, interested in this style, and how did growing up in Marlboro come into play, besides the fact that you met Jason and uh, and Yeah, Greg? so as you mentioned, um, influenced and inspired by different styles of music over the years and have gravitated towards uh, gypsy jazz for a number of reasons, not just my love for it, uh, but um, I was exposed to it pretty early on. Not only did my dad bring me to see Stefan Grappelli when I was young, uh, he had a lot of uh, records of Django Reinhardt laying around and he was a, he, he plays violin and guitar and he loved that style of music as well. So that was something we liked to play together. Actually growing up in Marlboro was, was a great place to be if you're learning the style of music because um, in Northampton, Massachusetts, there is this camp called Django in June, which has become a mecca for this style of, of, of music. So I started going that, to that when I was young, and they had fantastic European musicians coming and playing. And um, I was able to play and was exposed to uh, wonderful gypsy jazz musicians at an early age because I was able to go see them live. And um, from that, from opportunities of people I met at those camps, I was then invited to perform at Montreal Jazz Festival with different uh, different players and travel and go to Europe. And 
Um, and then eventually my first main touring gig was with John Jorgensen Quintet, one of the top proponents of this style in the U.S. And so it's, it's been not only just a creative, creatively uh, re- enriching, but it's been a good avenue for a career in playing jazz is uh, this style of music of gypsy jazz. Um, but I also have a, a love for more contemporary jazz as well, and I think this this album kind of highlights that. So it's it's nice to um, kind of have my foot in 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 different places and and really be able to express myself in different ways with different projects. So whether it's the Rhythm Future Quartet, which has been my busiest and uh, tours extensively, um, actually Greg plays with that project as well right, on bass. Right. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this year because we get uh, a lot of exciting project, uh, a lot of opportunities to perform with with Jason and uh, with some special guests who will be joining us on the CD releases, which are all inspiring contemporary jazz musicians like George Garzon and Jason Palmer, who all played on played on the album. Yeah. Excellent. Like, what do you say we uh, get to some uh, some great quartet music? Yeah, you guys want to uh, ease into it with something. Sure. I'm going to switch to the electric mandolin on this, and this is one that we featured off the album. It's our arrangement of the Beatles tune, Something. Thank you. 
All right, well, that was uh, a Beatles, a little Beatles tune for you. Now we're going to do an original composition by uh, Jason. Uh, one of the things we wanted to feature, as well as some of uh, some standards and as well as a Beatles number, is uh, original material, of course, on this last album. So this is one of Jason's songs called La Segunda.
You are listening to Live Jazz New England on 90.5 WICN. I'm your host, Pamela Hines, and my guest today is the Jason Anik Quartet. That was a brilliant Jason Yeager. There's elements of Jason Anik in your compositions. I noticed from listening so much to the Rhythm Futures Quartet and those compositions that I'm hearing similarities. Um, there's a compatibility um, even in your compositions. So, uh, that's a really nice tune, but I, I, I definitely feel um, the connection between the two of you, even in your compositions. Uh, yeah, how did you? Uh, I think I, I love I love playing Jason's compositions. I think there are similar threads, and I think it's kind of a inclusiveness with our writing. Um, we don't fit a prescription, and we love listening and are inspired by rhythms from around the world. Um, that one. Do you want to introduce that one? That has yeah. a specific kind so of that, groove. So that one uh, features a rhythm called Chacarera from Argentina, Chacarera. And uh, I, I spent a semester abroad in college studying there, and this was a piece that was inspired by some of the music that I witnessed and also played and, and got to learn about. Um, but I definitely hear what you're saying, and I, I think the next tune is emblematic of that. We're going to play another piece from the new album, United. Um, this was a song that I wrote specifically with Jason Anik in mind. I was trying to write something that had sort of a bluegrass uh, bent to it. And I had recently just, I live in New York City, and I had recently just moved to Harlem. Um, and it was the first piece that I wrote in my new apartment. So um, it's called the Harlem Hoedown, because I tried to have sort of a, a bluegrass flavor to it. I think I actually kind of failed on that front. But I'll let you, the listener, decide <laughs> whether it, it sounds like a bluegrass tune. I don't know that that matters, but that was my initial intent. But it was certainly intended to feature Jason Anik, and so um, that's not the song. Um, but uh, you'll hear and judge for yourself. But this was written with Jason specifically in mind, and so we definitely wanted to include it on the record. And it features a number of guests on the recording, including Jason Palmer and Jerry Leak and John Lockwood. And uh, we're really thrilled with how it came out. We're going to do a, a pared-down quartet version for you live. Uh, this is Harlem Hoedown.
All right, that was Harlem Hoedown, one of Jason Yeager's compositions. We're going to do one of my own compositions, and this is one that featured a great sax player, someone who I met uh, who was a student at Berkeley when I was teaching there, and his name was Clay Lyons. Uh, this is one called Bird's Eye View. Thank you. 
You are listening to Live Jazz New England. I'm your host, Pamela Hines, and my guest today is violinist Jason Anik with Jason Yeager on piano, Greg Lofman on bass, and Mike Connors on drums. So let's um, tell our folks here the um, CD release party at the Berkeley Performance Center, and the information on that is... Yeah, March 13th, at uh, 8 p.m. We're going to have a uh, number of special guests performing with us, along with Mike and Greg, who you're hearing today. And uh, <clears throat> Jason and I uh, both teach at Berkeley, and uh, we actually recorded the album in, in Berkeley's recording studios. Um, so this is, uh, we, we thought, you know, it would be appropriate to do our, our first big uh, celebration of the music at, at Berkeley Performance Center, and uh, we're really thrilled to be able to bring this music live to, to the community. And how, how has the been the move to New York? How is that, uh, has it been a thrill or a, an adjustment? Yeah, or? you know, there was an adjustment period. It was actually, I, I, I've been there a few years now, and I, I feel pretty much at home. Um, I think uh, it's, um, you know, the, the, the fortunate part of uh, playing jazz music is it's a very collaborative and community-oriented music. It's, it's less about spending all your days alone in a practice room and more about getting together with people and playing. And I think that if you uh, are willing to put yourself out there and introduce yourself to folks and go to jam sessions, um, you can really uh, meet a lot of uh, interesting and like-minded souls and, and really grow your, your community. And I, I think over time I've tried to do that. And so I've met a lot of great musicians and made a lot of friends in New York. And now I feel like I have a home there. Um, I just want to um, communicate to people where your website is and how people can find out about your performance schedule. Sure, yeah. Um, e- either website, uh, www.jasonank.com yeah, or jasonyeager.com. Okay. Um, we want to just do a few closing credits here, and then I'll let you guys just take it out to the top of the hour with your, mu- your great music. We want to also thank um, Jason and his quartet uh, for being here today. We've had uh, Jason Yeager on piano and Greg Lohman on bass with Mike Connors on drums. Live Jazz New England is made possible through the support of the Francis A. and Jacqueline H. Harrington Foundation, the Stoddard Charitable Trust, the Piano Mill of Rockland, Mass., Rick Hansen on the Tay Go Kit from the Acton Jazz Cafe. <laughs> we can all recognize that Go Kit. And uh, Brad Pierce of Starfleet Audio in Whitensville, Mass. So what do you have to uh, take us to the top of the hour? We're going to play, this is a composition of mine um, called Ahi. Ahi is a greeting in Israel. It's basically like saying, hey man or hey brother. And I wrote this for a really wonderful bass player named Tal Gamlieli. Uh, with whom I worked a lot when he was living in Boston, when we were both in Boston. And so this was a piece inspired by him. And um, I actually recorded it on my second trio album, uh, Affirmation. Um, but when I brought it to Jason Anik, he he really fell in love with it. And he said, man, you, you wrote a fiddle tune and you didn't even know it. <laughs> and he was right. So um, we're pleased to uh, play for you a, a quartet version of Ahi.
All right, that was Ahi, a composition by Jason Yeager. That was uh, the opening cut off of United, which will be released on March 10th. And we have some local uh, CD release shows coming up, including March 13th at the BPC. And in a, a few months after that, we'll be uh, at the Regatta Bar. So stay tuned for that as well. Okay. And uh, we want to thank again... Uh Jason Anik on violin and mandolin and Jason Yeager on piano, Greg Loafman on bass and Mike Connors on drums. And next to me is um, Brad Pierce of Starfleet Audio. I'm Pamela Hines, and we want to thank our audience for tuning in today to Live Jazz New England on 90.5 WICN. And it looks like if you can play a little quickie here, we've got about three minutes till the top of the hour. You got a stomp or a hoedown, another one in your pocket there. <laughs>